As you know already, man's a workaholic. I don't take days off work. Ever. Never take days off work. Nah. I'll give you a little cool backstory as to why man's a workaholic. And it kind of starts from secondary school, you know. Any of you lot been following me for a significant amount of time, you lot will know man used to buy and sell crisp drinks in school. Especially the people them that's watching me who went to man's secondary school. Big up the Winchmore man them and gal them as well. When I was in school, from the end of year 7 until year 11, and that's why I got kicked out of school, unofficially expelled, I was buying and selling crisp and drinks in that. And I never took a day off work. Um, work. It was work. I never took a day off buying and selling crisp and drinks. Ever. The only time I didn't buy and sell any crisp and drinks is certain times the teachers then was on to man. And I had to lay low for two weeks. And I literally felt like I had no fucking purpose. Most normal people will be thinking your purpose was to go to school. Mine was to buy and sell crisp and drinks and make money and that. So maybe that's where the strong work ethic came from. Because... Like I said, I never took no days off apart from the ones where I was forced to. Other than that, I was in the middle of the playground during break time and a little bit in lunch time and that buying and selling crisping well selling crisping drinks and that. But partly why I don't take no days off work as a as a working adult, as a working man, is because I'm self-employed. When you're self-employed, if you don't work, you don't get paid. If you are sick, you don't get paid. If you take annual leave, you don't get paid. If you have an appointment where you need to sit at your house and wait for someone to come or whatever, you don't get paid. When I used to work on them construction sites and that, them man, they are ruthless. Yeah? You would think that, because it's like zero hours contract and that, you would think, oh, they would give you two weeks, a month notice. Blood, them man, they will tell you on the day. It's your last day. A midweek, you know, Wednesday. They call it getting pumped. Yeah? So, you know, like in America, they say, oh, you got fired. Yeah. On construction sites in the UK, we call it getting pumped. It's just play on the, on the word fired and that. Yeah. Because like a fireman uses a fire pump in it. So, anyway. So, and I've done it before. It's not like, oh... I've been pumped on a Wednesday and I didn't see it coming, but really and truly they told me on Monday, but I weren't paying attention. I thought it ain't going to happen to me. No, I've had to do it. I've had the, the project manager say, listen, today we're cutting down the numbers. Yeah. A man will tell me at 12 and by 3 p.m. I would have dropped out two, three men. I've had to go to man and say, listen, it's your last day today. So when I was a worker in that and I was on construction sites, they literally would tell you on the day. Now, sometimes, some of the project managers and all the supervisors, they will be cool and they will say, listen, during the team morning briefing and that, we're going to be getting rid of like four people. <laughs> you look around, there's only six of you in total and that, innit? But yeah, they, they, will literally, they might be like a team of 10 and they say, listen, yeah, they might not even say the numbers, but they say, listen, some people are going to be getting let go later on today, just to warn you. Um, and we will let you know later in it. Now they've really made that decision and that, but trust me, they might tell you three, four days in advance, or if you're lucky and that, they will have the whole team moving, bammy, yeah. Because no one knows when you don't know if this is gonna be your last day, especially if it's a good little money maker and a little earner. So if it's some shit job and you're just there to bide your time and then fuck off to some other construction site, they don't really care, in it. But if it's a good little money maker or that, yeah, decent overtime, and that, you're going to be bammy, like, fuck, like. Yeah, I, trust me, I know about them one there, boy. If you can, all right, boom. I've had a couple of times where you get me, they're talking about getting rid of the numbers. I'm already making phone calls, yeah, sending texts into the, the electrical group chat, and like, oh, is there any work, any electrical testing work? Because this is what happens on construction sites, and I'm just only speaking from my experience, and that, because I'm an electrical tester, there's less work for electrical tester. And me, I do not have the skills to go and do electrical work on a construction site. So on construction sites, they will install metal conduit and metal tray and trunking and that. When I was an apprentice electrician at Holmes Harringate, I never done any of that stuff. I'm 31 years old right now. The last time I bent a piece of conduit or cut a piece of metal trunking was when I was in college 15 years ago when I was fucking 16 years old. So I hadn't I haven't done it. So I'm not gonna be experienced doing it. I ain't gonna be able to just jump on a construction site and get to work and that. So 
The only sorts of work that I do and can do is on a construction site is electrical testing. And there's less work for electrical testers than that because there's less demand than that. You, if you think about it this way, 90% of the electrical work is wiring and that and installation, 10% of it is just inspecting, testing and commissioning, turning on the power and that. So, but if you're an electrician that's got experience on construction sites, then it's cool. If you've got experience on the construction sites and you've got your inspection and testing and that, oh, you're laughing, man. You're laughing. I mean, to be fair, you don't even need inspection and testing. I would still advise people to do it. But as long as you know how to do, like, conduit and whatever, and you've got experience on construction sites and that, blood, every fucking day, every day I get texts, yeah, to my phone personally, emails to my phone personally about work going, and I'm on the group chat, so I see the notifications pop up and that. That's just for everybody. So if you're an electrician and you've got experience on the construction site, you'll never be out of work. With me... Because I'm limited to doing inspection and testing on construction sites and that, the work is limited for me. Um, if I was going to go and get a job as like a house basher, people rewiring houses, well, I could do any of that work because that's what man's learned to do throughout my apprenticeship and that. So I would have, if I get let go for a from a job, I would have a two week period now and then where I don't have no work and that. But obviously, it's kind of cool because man just graft and save money, and I was never, I was never short for money, and fucking hell, I didn't even work throughout lockdown. The whole one year, yeah, from January when I got fired, I started back work February the next year. I got fired January twenty twenty. Started back work, I think February or either January twenty twenty one, because I saved up so much money on the previous job and that. But um, yeah, that's why I have such a strong work ethic and that because I kind of just live every day like. It's my last employment day. Yeah. So man have to maximise the hours and that. Obviously, man's come become a little bit complacent on this contract and that. But at the same time, if they fire me tomorrow, I'll be like, All right, yeah, cool, boom, go and find the next job. I wouldn't want to have to though, because this is a cushy job. I work and live in the same area. I get to come home for... I was telling my friend, I go home for a cup of tea and that. He's like, you're a fucking joker and that. Yeah, I get to come back home for a late breakfast or early lunch and that. My girl will make me food and that. She's abandoned me now. Though. She's, she's with her family and that. So you get me? I've got to fend for myself until she comes back. Yeah, you get me? Man's in survival mode right now. Yeah. I just need food, water and shelter and don't die. Yeah. <laughs> until my girl comes back. But um, yeah, that's why a man has such a strong work ethic and that. From back in the day... In school, I was always dedicated to the task. And secondly, being on construction sites and just you get me the supervisors and the managers and that got you moving bammy, thinking that you don't even know when to, to the next day is and that. So that's why man used to just bang out all the overtime. Man used to work like a man don't even know when man's next job's gonna be about. Because think about it this way: if you're on a, if you're at a temporary, if you're at a workplace and you know at some point they're gonna let you go. And when they let you go, you're not going to be able to get a job for a week or two weeks. Then if there's overtime opportunities in that, you're going to work every fucking hour under the sun. You're going to work every single day because you don't know when your next employment is going to be. And it's a good it's a good mindset to be in. It's a good mindset to be in. Obviously, I know I've still got a long time on this contract and that, but still, I still pretend that, yeah, get me. I don't know when I'm going to get fired next and that sort yeah, that's how I develop that strong work ethic and uh, that's why I work every day and I'm a workaholic.